surah and ayah in the context most of the prophets are mentioned in this ayah I, I will read for you the context of that many prophets are mentioned the ayah says wa ja'alnahum a'immatan yahduna bi amrina wa awhayna ilayhim fi'l al-khayrat wa iqama as-salati wa ita' az-zakah wa kanu lana 'abidin and we made them the context of these are the prophets various prophets all the prophets including muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we made them the prophets the imam aimma the leaders so all the prophets are the leaders quran says we made them leaders wa ja'alnahum aimmatan yahduna bi amrina we made them leaders guiding men from our command and we sent them inspiration to do good deeds to establish regular prayer and to practice regular charity and they constantly preserve, uh, constantly serve so all our prophets are our leaders including muhammad peace be upon him but he is also the seal of the prophets bismillahirrahmanirrahim i am reciting the ayah of surah muhammad 47 الذين كفروا وصدوا عن سبيل الله يضل عن اعمالهم والذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وامنوا بما نزل على محمد وهو الحق من ربهم كفر عنهم سيئاتهم واصلح بالهم those who reject allah and hinder from the path of allah their deeds will allah render astray and those who believe and work deeds of righteousness and believe in the revelation sent down to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam for it is the truth from their lord he will remove from them their ills and improve their condition in quran there are so many ayahs about the deeds of the men will be rewarded but in our society there is a misconcept that if we are muslims and we have read kalmai tayyiba la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah then we will be spared from the jahannam and uh, muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam will do shafaat for us uh, even we have done all the evils in our lives so i want to explain this jazaka Uh, the question the lady was referring to somewhat sum up to shafaat on the last day from rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam for the people who just recite the kalama uh, implying that if people are not practicing the religion of allah implying that if they are not practicing properly just by the recitation of kalama will they enter in, into heaven maybe the uh, concept of the the question would be sum up to like that so surah tauba 9 surah tauba 9 aya 80 so the people who are not following islam properly who are not the righteous people so allah says about them istaghfir lahum istaghfir lahum او لا تستغفر او لا تستغفر لهم ان تستغفر لهم 70 مره فلن يغفر الله لهم ذلك بانهم كفروا بالله ورسوله والله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين the translation is addressing to the rasul whether thou ask for forgiveness whether thou ask for forgiveness those people who are not practicing or not whether thou ask or you don't ask the sin is not forgivable if thou ask 70 times if thou ask 70 times for their forgiveness allah will not forgive them allah will not forgive them you have to do the job it is not an easy 
cake or pastry, you can eat it. So Allah says, if thou ask 70 times, Allah will not forgive them. Because they have rejected Allah and his messenger. And Allah, guys, not who presumably rebellious. So person who is in reality doing some work, he will enter into paradise. All over the Quran you read, those who believe and do righteous works, heaven is for them. Jannah is for them. So many times I can show you to whom the Jannah belong. You don't have to find names of these people. So many times Allah says, these are the character, these are the personality you do, you are into heaven. If you don't, you are not. So for those people who are not doing the job, Allah says, if you ask forgiveness 70 times, Allah will not forgive them. This is not my words. Surah Tawbah 980 Ayah. Sheikh Saab, you have uh, recited uh, Quranic verses and translated it, but you use some words, uh, you can call it as explanations. So this, these explanations uh, have uh, been done by our beloved Prophet, Hazrat Muhammad, Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa So we, I and you, we are just a common man. So can you give any name to those explanations? That's my question. The question is this. You read Quran, you translated it, and you used some words to explain it. So Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa also has done it. So these explanations, can you give any name to these explanations of Prophet? Yeah. No, 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 no. no. Can you give those the name to those explanations? of Prophet. Yeah, sayings No, I am not very clear. I am और फिर कुछ अपने पास अल्फाज दिए ये कुछ भी कह रहे इंग्लिश में उसको ए वी जो भी बोले इन्होंने तो ऐसा सरकार ने आलम हजरत मोहम्मद मुस्तफा सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम ने भी किया लेकिन मैं और शेख साहब हम एक कॉमन आदमी हैं और सरकार ने आलम सल्लम की जो वो एक्सप्लेनेशंस थी उनको ये कोई नाम देते हैं ये क्या इतने ये क्या नाम देते हैं जी Uh, so, uh, the fir first of all, I would like to ask the gentleman, would he agree to my explanation? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So, so I, you think that I did not say something wrong? Thank you very much. Yes, what's your question? The question was not also clear. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's only a few minutes left for prayers now. I will not take much of time. Against the advice of the secretary, I will say that the lecture was excellent, except that I wish to add a few words to it. Sir, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if you have a question, you are yeah, most welcome. I, yeah. uh, but if you want to say a few words of praise, I no, appreciate no, your feelings. No, no, no. I have a question. You are most welcome, sir. I would like to know. The Quran, every Nabi has been named by his name, excepting Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's been called Ya Yuhan Nabi 11 times, Muhammad four times, and Ahmad once. He's affectionately called 
also Yasin and Mudassar and Muzammil. I like to know from the speaker why he had missed this thing. To some of the audience, the question is, uh, the Qur'an speaks of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by name four times as Muhammad, peace be upon him, and one time as Ahmad, peace be upon him. And all these five ayats were given to you in that booklet. That is the address to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Qur'an. I will come to his question, but I would like to add to your information that Musa Salam's name is mentioned in the Quran 136 times. Isa Salam's name is mentioned in the Quran 25, 25 times. Ibrahim Alayhi Salam's name is mentioned in the Quran 67 times and on and on I can go. But he is saying the name which he thinks that Ya Yuan Nabi is not the name of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nabi is a title bestowed all the messengers of God, Allah, mentions about Ibrahim as a Nabi, Musa as a Nabi, Dawud as a Nabi. So all these Nabi, when Allah says, Ya Ayyuhan Nabi, He's addressing to all the Nabis in the past, but the seal is the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we take Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam there, Ya Ayyuhan Nabi, is the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the seal. So previously all the prophets address Ya Ayyuhan Nabi, they understand the message that they are addressing Ibrahim al-Islam. But now when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa came, it was the seal of the prophets. So Nabi is addressed, what you counted so many times, is addressed to all the prophets in history. When Allah says, Ya, you Rasul, is addressed to all the messengers of in history. So that is not the name of the prophet, that is the title, Nabi. So the, the other thing, Yasin, in the Quran, they are not names. According to the Quranic learned people, this, they, they, there are certain surahs which begins with Alif Lam Mim, Alif Lam Mim Ra, Stasim, Qafia, Ain Saad, Kafaya Ain Saad. So these are Muqatta'as, they are alphabets. So alphabet, alphabets, they are not words. So when you say Ya Seen is a word, you know, is an alphabet, two alphabets. Ya Seen, Ta, Ha, two alphabets. Alif, Lam, Mim, three alphabets. So we pronounce them as alphabets. They are not words, they are not names. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were mentioned by name I gave you in the booklet. So it's a very big, big subject. Nabi, wherever is mentioned, we understand it is referring to all the prophets and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the seal of the prophets. It is a title. Uh, I would uh, take it to be the last question from this gentleman. I have one comment and one question. My comment is on Surah Al-Fatah. When it says, وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ أَشَدَّ عَلَى الْكُفَّارِ And we have been translating it as strong. To me it appears that the English reading people will the way they understand the word strong is not meant by ashadda. To me, it looks something rough or tough. I do not know how far you agree with me on this point. Yeah, this, is, this was my comment. I would say it's rough or tough. <clears throat> okay, the second question is about Surah Saf. And this I have, since I was once surrounded by the Christian friends, and I was not able to answer that question. I would like your, to have your help on it. The question, uh, this surah talks, uh, this, sorry. Okay, this surah talks about some quotations from Isa ibn Maryam, which says that after him there will be one prophet and his name will be Ahmad. My first question, since you have been going through Bible and other books, is whether this is provided in the Bible itself or not. Because when I quote it from Quran, they don't believe it. Or at least I was not able to convince them. Because they told me that this is what Quran says and we don't believe Prophet Muhammad because he was the descendant of Ismail in whose 
family or who, who's down under. There was no prophet. Prophets were all down under Ishaq and Yaqub and others. So I was helpless there. I'd like to have your help on this question. I conducted was what Al-Quran says about Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. So I was trying to refrain myself except making two, three points related to uh, Christianity. Uh, because we share some common uh, understanding. So the question is that is first question is that is there any reference in the Bible or the New Testament that which the Christians believe in for the coming of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So I, I cannot quote you the reference right now, but I can give you the quotation. So in, I'm quoting the Bible now. In some place, in, somewhere in John, I'm, I'm not very sure. You can verify after the lecture because I, will, I have to search in the Bible. It is something like that, that he says to the disciples that I will pray to the, my father that the language of the Bible, that's not Quran. I will try, try to pray to the Father that He will give you an other comforter, an other comforter. So the word another means not Him, not His coming, an other comforter, comforter, pericler, they say. So further He says to His disciples, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it? When He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but shall what he hear, that shall he speak. And he will guide you into all truth. So that spirit of truth, Sadat al-Ameen, is our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is in the Bible. But I do not want to prove the point that Bible also speak about our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this lecture of mine. So I did not give the reference. So you can tell them there is a mentioning of his coming. And in Deuteronomy 18 and 18 Old Testament, he says, I will raise them a, a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, in, from Moses it speaks. So there are two references. Now regarding to Ismail and Israel, so I will just bring your notice to the same ayah, Surah Saf 61, where it called Isa ibn Maryam, Ya Bani Israel. So, Hazrat Isa salam is addressing to the Bani Israel. Inni Rasulullah ilaykum. Most certainly, I am the messenger to you, to the children of Israel. Musaddiq al-lima bayna yadayya min al-Tawrati and confirming what is before me from the Tawrat. Wa mubashiram bi rasooli yati min baad ismu Ahmad. And giving who glad tidings? Giving who the glad tidings? To the children of Israel. The glad tidings of the good news were given to who? The children of Israel. So Allah says, Falamma ja'ahum. I'm reading the same ayah. When he, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, came to them, to the children of Israel. Not, I don't know what about Ismail, because that is a biblical genealogy. But Allah says, Falamma ja'ahum bil bayinat. Among the children of Israel, the message was given to the children of Israel. And among the children of Israel, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came, according to the ayah. Falamma ja'ahum bil bayinat. And when he came into them, qalu hada sihr mubin. They say, it is evident sorcery, that is magic. So the address is to the children of Israel, and the good news is given to the children of Israel, and a messenger coming after him, Ahmad, is to the children of Israel. All over, the same ayah. You don't have to bring any other genealogy from the Bible to prove your case that it was, I don't know how a smile, because the Quran only speaks of Bani Adam and Bani Israel, all over the Quran. Otherwise, there are Qom, Qom, my people, my people, my people, Qom. But basically, it is addressing all over the Quran, the children of Adam and children of Israel. And in a few, because I'm making some series of talks, I'm also giving a lecture, what the Quran says about the children of Israel. Who are the children of Israel? And I'm also giving a lecture on what the Quran says about the book and the people of the book in the next, uh, in about in one month's time. I want to ask you a question. Uh, did Muhammad, may peace be upon him, had the knowledge of unseen, I mean, Ilmul Ghaib? This is my question. Uh, 
the gentleman is asking a question that did our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon, upon him, had the knowledge of the unseen, the, uh, in the Arabic is ghaib or translated as unseen or we can say uh, translated as absent which is not in front of you. The word ghaib means which is not in front of you or absent or unseen. So in Anam, Surah 6, Anam, no, you may not find in the booklet, I'm giving you an answer from the Quran, Surah Anam 6, and the ayah is 50. قُلْ لَا قُولُ لَكُمْ عِنْدِي خَزَائِنُ إِنُ اللَّهِ وَلَا أَعْلَمُ الْغَيْبِ وَلَا قُولُ لَكُمْ إِنِّي مَلَكْ إِنْ أَتَّبِعُ إِلَّا مَا يُحَى Say, I tell you not that with me are the treasures of Allah. Wala alamul ghaiba. Nor do I know what is hidden or what is ghaib. Rasul to Allah commanded command our Rasul to say. I tell you not that there are treasures with me, the treasures that with me are the treasures of Allah, nor do I know what is ghaib, from the ghaib, unseen. I do not know that. Nor do I tell you that I'm an angel, nor do I tell you that I'm a malaika or malak. I am not that. I but follow what is revealed to me by inspiration. In attabi'u illa ma yu hailayya. So, uh, only the revelation given to him, he knows that, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that knowledge, when given to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is ghaib also, but when it is absent and when it is given to him by revelation, he knows. Otherwise he not, doesn't know ghaib, ilm al -ghaib. But the revelation, in attabi'u illa ma yuha ilayya, that the revelation given to him is also ghaib, but what is given to him, that he knows. Otherwise he doesn't know. قُلْ لَا قُلُ لَكُمْ عِنْدِي خَزَائِنُ اللَّهِ وَلَا عَلَمُ الْغَيْبَ وَلَا قُلُ لَكُمْ إِنِّي مَلَكْ إِنْ أَتَّبِعُ إِلَّا مَا يُوحَى إِلَيَّ قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الْأَعْمَى وَالْبَصِيرِ أَفَلَا تَتَفَكَّرُونَ Say, I tell you not that with me are the treasures of Allah, nor do I know what is hidden, nor do I tell you that I'm an angel. I but follow what is revealed to me. Say, can the blind be held equal in the seeing? Will you then not consider? So this is probably the answer the gentleman was asking the question. Before somebody comes on the mic and asks a second question, I have been given this piece of paper from the ladies. She is asking a question, Quran is a saying of God. Please, how can Quran become the saying of Rasul? Please explain distinctly and clearly. In my lecture, I quoted an ayah, Fala uqsimu bima tufsin, Surah al haqqa you can check in the booklets, Surah al haqqa that is 69, Surah, and ayah is 38 and onwards. The ayah says, Fala uqsimu bima tufsirun, so I do, I do call to witness what you see, wa ma la tufsirun, and what you see not, innahu la qawlu rasulin kareem, for surety, for surety, this is the qawl or the saying of the messenger. That's not me saying, that's in the Quran. So she's thinking that the saying of the Rasul cannot be the sayings of God. So in the Quran, Allah explained that this is kalam of Allah, not kal uh, kalam of Rasul. Kalam in Arabic means word of Allah. These are the word of Allah who uttered is saying. Qawl mean in Arabic saying and Quran says this is the kalam of Allah meaning word of Allah and when you say Qawl Rasul Kareem this is the saying he uttered those words words kalam of Allah was uttered and in the same booklet I explained that 30, 40 ayat and 42 that the Qawl Rasul is a revelation sent down by the Lord of the world so Qawl Rasul is these utterances of the messenger, not his words. The words was Kalam of Allah, 
when uttered by a messenger it becomes saying of Allah a saying of Rasul saying of Rasul is equal to the kalam of Allah the word of Allah so Quran is the kalam of Allah and messengers uttered that is saying of Rasul that is the answer